Good morning, Quadcopter 101 here with a review of the Florion uh, FX10. Now, if you look at this, it's another pocket quadcopter. Uh, you, you use its case as the carrying case and also as the flight controller. Um, if you look at it even closer, it appears to be an exact duplicate of the Ultra Mini D1. Now, I'm not sure which one came first. Uh, the D1 or the FX10, or if there really is a difference, maybe they're just produced by the same company under different names. I'm going to review it just to see how it performs, and you can uh, review the other video that I've done of the D1 to see how it uh, compare the two. Uh, this one comes in orange. I like that orange. <laughs> Fluorescent orange, you can see that very well out here in the sunlight. Um, the controller itself, if you look at it, um, is it looks like a standard uh, nano controller. Feels very good in the hands. Um, especially as compared to like the FQ777, uh, that one feels rather bulky in, in your hands, the controller uh, carrying case for that. This one here feels, feels right, feels very nice in your hands. Uh, the left stick controls uh, the throttle and yaw, but also if you push in on it, you get beginner, expert, and headless mode from the, uh, the stick for each time you push it. Uh, the right stick controls flips. Uh, let's look at the quadcopter itself, pulling it out of the case. Again, it's this quadcopter is smaller than, say, the CX-10. It's quite a bit smaller than the CX-10. Uh, right now, this and the D1, the Ultra Mini D1, are currently the smallest quadcopters on the market that I'm aware of. Um, I'm not sure that it's possible to make them even smaller than this. I'm sure I'll be proven wrong, though. <laughs> but, yeah, currently, this is the smallest quadcopter on the market. Uh, let's see how it flies. Um, first off, let's take a look at this. As, again, it's as with most Nanos. Uh, the battery is built into the quadcopter. You can't remove it. It has this little charging port right here with a little proprietary charger for this particular model. And it has its on-off switch here. Now, one important thing about this quadcopter, you need to start it off by placing it on a flat level surface. If you point it on a tilted surface, um, this thing initializes its gyros at startup. So we're going to go over here to a surface that I know is relatively flat and level over here by the watering fountain. And we'll use this as our surface to bind the quadcopter and set its uh, initial baseline heading for headless mode. And we're going to point it down in that direction That's on a relatively flat level surface. Also, you got to turn it on first. That helps. <laughs> and there we go. And that'll be our base heading too. Turning on the quadcopter, binding it, and taking off in beginner mode. Actually, I want to throw it. Ooh. We're going to toss it. Here we go. And there it is. Let's bring it in close so you see it. Now, this quadcopter, like the CX-10 can build a drift up in the wind. The way to counter that is to try to keep doing funnels. Or, if it builds up an excessive drift, just land it for a few seconds. And that will let, don't turn it off, but just land it on the ground. And that will uh, let the accelerometers recalibrate against the wind. It's a fun little flyer. Okay, let's do a flip. It does cheater flips like the D1. Where cheater flips are, uh, frequent flyer RC <laughs> coined that phrase. But what that means is the quadcopter goes upward before doing the flip so it doesn't come down and hit the ground after the flip. So it does flips very well. Okay, let's go and try the headless mode out. Okay, it thinks that's the... I must have had it pointed in that direction when I took off. But it thinks that's the base heading over there. But with that in mind, I'll just reorientate myself toward the base heading. Here we are doing pirouettes. Okay, the wind's picking up on this. Coming out of headless mode. Going to oh, come back. 
Hold on, folks. I got confused with the headless mode. I recommend not messing with the headless mode too much on this. And let's let that sit on the ground there because it was picking up a drift from the wind here that I'm fighting. There's a little breeze. Now, this is really not an outdoor flyer, really. This should be flown indoors, mainly. Okay, we're back in beginner. Let's see if that helped. Yeah, that helped. So again, when it picks up a drift from the wind, just land it for about a second or two. Well, give it about five seconds. And it'll fight, you know, it'll regain its uh, recalibration from the drift. I'm going to land it one more time. And for the remainder of the flight, I'm going to be doing funnels to show you how funnels usually let it sit undisturbed. See, let it just sit undisturbed. doesn't have to be flat for this until the, re or the accelerometers recalibrate. And then we're good to go. Now I'm going to try to keep doing funnels. That wind is picking up. So again, not really an outdoor flyer. Indoors it's very stable. But outdoors it has a problem with wind. And you'd expect that for something this size. Okay, let me get my thumbnail here. <laughs> Just rocking along beside it here while trying to hover it in the wind. Okay, the drift is really picking up on it. Landing it for a second. I'm not sure if upside down is a good option, but let's let it sit here for a second. 1001, 1002, 1003. Okay, we should be good to go again. But again, this is the FX-10 from Florian, mainly an indoor flyer, as you can see. Outdoors, it has to be really, really a light breeze. Indoors, very nice and stable. Relatively good flight time on it. And right now, that drift is so much that I, I really can't uh, fight the wind. I'm having a hard time fighting the breeze. I'm at full pitch, if you can see, by the way. But you can also see it's a relatively stable flyer. For Steve C, if he's still out there. <laughs> well, that wasn't really hands-off. But I'm going to fly this. Let's land it and see if landing it will help. I still got flight time on it. Hold on, folks. We're going to rebind it one more time on a flat surface. Okay, this time I'm going to set the heading that way. Rebinding. And there we go. Let's go back in the field. I'm going to turn headless mode on one more time because this time I think I correctly set it <laughs> down the field that way. Yep, there we go. I had to point at 90 degrees out the last time. But here we go in headless mode. Um, in headless mode, it's in beginner rate, so the pirouettes that it's doing in headless mode are relatively slow, as you can see here. But that is forward, that is back, and that is the end of the battery. <laughs> so, oh no, FX-10, great little beginner quadcopter. Let me turn it off here. Uh, mainly an indoor flyer. Not recommended very much for outdoor flying. Um, but indoors, great. Uh, you can carry it along with you in a pocket, take it to school. <laughs> if you've got a nice low wind area at school, you can fly it at school easily. Quadcopter 101, I hope you enjoyed the flight. Quadcopter 101, signing out.